Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and this is just going to be a quick uh, patrons bonus video. Um, so, um, yeah, let's get right to it. So, as you can clearly see here, we have a 7990. Uh, this is the Power Color Red Devil 13 PCB? I'm not sure. This is a custom 7990 PCB. These are rare. Well, relatively rare, but they're cool, and they're custom. So I, so I picked this up on eBay, it's dead, and the current malfunction is that it basically crashes when you try to install the drivers. So it puts out an image and everything, but once you get into Windows and you install the AMD drivers, yeah, <laughs> the, the drivers die. So, you know, that's generally an indication that you have core damage of some kind. So I have tried to, so I did thermally shock the card uh, when I was cleaning it. Um, just like took it from all the way, like I threw hot water at it, then went straight to co really cold water. Um, we'll see if that does anything. If that doesn't do anything, I might also just, like ultimately right now, I, g I got the card relatively cheap and I'm completely cool with it just being a wall ornament. But uh, basically, um, I might also, what I might do is I'll just like dunk the, the card in liquid nitrogen. Uh, and that sometimes also fixes things in the same, like the, the principle behind liquid freezing things, fixing things. Like I've heard people fix memory sticks by putting them in the freezer. Um, I've heard of people fixing cards by putting them in the freezer. I know Lumi had a, Lumi kill, had a 9900K that he revived by dunking it in liquid nitrogen for a while as well. So we'll see if, you know, dunking this in liquid nitrogen might not revive it. And unlike say the oven method, um, freezing things is general and relatively non-destructive. I mean, it's not a great method of doing things, but generally speaking, like if, if you heat up capacitors, they don't like it, your MOSFETs don't like it, your dyes don't like it, your PLX chip doesn't like it, nothing on the card likes high temperatures. On the other hand, if you freeze things, well, the capacitors won't be super happy about it, but uh, <laughs> the, 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 the rest of the card, like the silicon doesn't care. It's just like, the, the low temperatures, like, the main concern is that you might thermally shock it when, when it's too, uh, like, uh, bringing up, bring up the temperature so quickly that something might crack or something, but the card already doesn't work, so, you know, um, I'll take my chances with that. Ultimately, uh, right now, I'm considering this a wall ornament, um, so, anyway, the reason why we're taking a look at this card, we're not going to be trying to diagnose it because it runs, right? There's no real PCB damage, well, other than this whatever the hell that is. So as you can clearly see, somebody's knocked off all the capacitors here. And I'm not sure if that might not be the other cause, like the, the other potential cause for the instability. So I might try, like, I don't know, I'll try maybe replace those with something and it'll fix the card, but I, I doubt it. I really, really doubt it. I don't think that's the actual cause. Anyway, um, the reason why we're taking a look at this card today is because I have a question about this PCB that I need answered. How many phases are in what VRM? Because that is a question that's been bugging me for a very long time. Um, and so today we shall answer that question because we have a bunch of phases here. We have a bunch of phases there, a bunch of phases here. We have a phase down here. We have another phase. I, well, I assume that's a phase down here as well. And the question is, how are these wired up? So let's start with these two suspects first. Um, we're just going to check how the inductors are connected. Um, well, more like... Well, I've already started probing the card, so I, I've kind of cheated, but th this is cool. So if we check... Let, let's just check the resistances, right? So first we check our capacitors. I'll put capacitors, and that's 2.4 ohms. Okay, cool. And then let's check these guys over here. So 2.4 ohms on a 7990, that's a pretty good indication that you're measuring your core resistance. Check these guys over here. Also 2.4. And these. Also, you know, uh, we'll call it 2.4. Okay, so at this point, if I measure from one choke to this choke, okay, so they're part of one regulator. Okay. Damn. Okay, so this... These two and these four inductors up here, that's all one VRM. It never occurred to me that that was actually possible. So this is a six phase V-core VRM, right? Like the, these four and like these four phases and these two phases 
they're connected together, right? We can we can see that because when you measure from the inductor across the like from one in set of inductors to the other, they're all shorted out, so they share output. And uh, yeah, the, th this is the core, and they all have core resistance. So this point, um, I think it might be worth, uh, well, wh where does the memory get its power on this side of the card, right? So I assume this capacitor is memory. Yeah, okay, so 75 ohms, yeah, that's a pretty good bet that that is a memory rail. So where does that get juice from? I assume that's the PLX chip down there, so let's check the resistance on this. Yeah, okay, that's got to be the PLX chip. Also, this is a good confirmation that a working PLX chip is 10 ohms. I wasn't sure about that, but it looks like it is. So, okay. So, working PLX is 10 ohms. We also have this... We have this inductor over here as well, though. Like this big fat one. So, like, I'd assume this is memory power. Let's see. I'm gonna probe the inductor to ground. Okay, well, that's that's not memory power. <laughs> what about this one, then? But that one is memory power. Interesting. Like, wait, really? Damn, that is interesting. So where the hell does this memory chip get its power from? Because it can't get power from these. Right? Like, this is all V-Core. So if we measure from U to there like that would be concerning in my opinion but anyway let's let's just okay first I'll figure out which side of that cap is ground that's not the ground side okay let's check this oh that is that is silly I wonder if this card has problems with memory clock okay so we have a two-phase memory power all the way over here because if, if we check that that is really silly. So, okay, so there's your voltage regulator. <laughs> there's your last set of memory chips that you're trying to power. That is the, I am like, that has to be suboptimal. Yeah, they're actually powering memory chips all the way over here from there. So we have two phase memory power. Okay, so that's that's still like, that's still interesting though. Now that has me concerned because if we look at, like, if we look at this section of the card right here, and you know, I like Mike is over there, so I'm gonna rotate the card around. So we have one thirty-five fifty-five or thirty-five fifty. I'm not sure which which version at the time. Either way, it's a big fat square sixty amp power stage from IR. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's eight power stages on this side, so they're not all going to be the same thing, are they? Okay, those are shorted together. Those aren't. Okay. Okay, so... I guess that means what we're looking at... I'm, I'm just going to check for sure. Okay, that's memory power over there. Man, this, this thing's a, hard to check. That That's... That's a bit high for a core, but sure, that's a core. So if we go... Okay, so that's memory. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, no. Did I count wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so we have a... So that's that, that there is our six-phase V-core, like that. We have two-phase memory power up here, which powers both memory for both both cores, which is kind of silly because you need to... Like, the voltage over here, like, GDDR5 is re relatively low power, but if I remember correctly, that VRM should be pushing, like, 10 or 20 amps. This much distance at 20 amps? I, I refuse to believe that this memory chip doesn't get a significantly lower voltage than that one. Which is really stupid. 
<laughs> right, because this, this poor memory chip is going to be running on a lower voltage than that one, which basically means if you're overclocking memory on this card, this core is going to have sub suboptimal memory clocks, because all of these memory chips are going to be slightly undervolted, or all of these are going to be slightly overvolted, depending on how they have it set up, because th there's no way you're compensating. Like, th the thing is, is, like, if you wanted to, like, try even out the voltage, you'd have to do something where you go, like, First you run your power to here, like to the midpoint of the two cores, and then you branch out, which is just silly. Why would you do that? So yeah, I assume like I, I should ch if I ever get the card to run properly, I should check what the voltage over here is compared to over there, because I don't believe it'll be very, very balanced. And the other thing is, is of course there's a VDDCI rail on uh, AMD GPUs, so that's the the memory controller voltage, um, and that's going to be down these two phases down here, right? Because and I assume they have the, the VDDCI in parallel, then. Yeah, okay, which side of that's ground? Okay, that side's ground. Okay, so that, that one's core. Um, I don't actually know which of these capacitors around the GPU core would... would... I can't be that lucky, can I? No, it's... <laughs> It's terrible. Okay, wait. We can we can flip it over. We can check from behind. So this says positive on this end. So let's see. There, there's a ground. Yeah. Okay. So we have twenty ohms on on that. Um, and I th think these are VDDCI. No. Yeah. Okay. So that's VDDCI cap one. Right, so, and then VDDCI over here should be the same cap, same. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Man, that, that seems really dumb. Because VDDCI is a similar rail on a single core 7970, you'd be looking at about 10, 20 amp, or like 10 amps, maybe 15 on that rail. And again, they're pushing it from here to here to there. <laughs> that is really... That that can't be like that. That can't be good. Like I, I'm not sure that it causes massive issues, but it definitely is is it's suboptimal for sure. Like th this is not something you would want to do uh, if you had other options. Though I do have to like I am impressed that they managed to cram a si like get six phases for both cores. So that's significantly better than the re what you get on the reference cards. I'm not a fan of them, like, pushing freaking memory voltage power from there to here, and memory controller voltage from there to here. Like, just, I don't know. Maybe they should have tried, like, let's think about this. They could have tried maybe to, like, shift this core further that way, and then they could have moved memory power and VDDCI into the middle of the GPU right around here. That way it would be, you know, similar distance to both cores. Um, admittedly, at that point, I... Think they would need another uh, voltage controller because right now, let's see, you have a CHL A228. I think that's an A228, isn't it? It's probably an A228. It's a 79. Yeah, it's an A22. Wait. Yeah, A228. So we have an A228 and then another A228. So I assume what they're doing because let's let's just check back of the card. Nope, there's no other controllers. Okay, yeah. So what they seem to be doing is they have this 8228, which does, like, v, v core and VDDCI, and then they have this 8228, which does V core and VMEM, because this has eight phases total, um, and you can reassign them into any configuration that, like, a 6 plus 2 is a completely valid configuration for that controller. So, you know, they could be running this as 6 plus 2, that as 6 plus 2, except this is uh, V core plus VDDCI, and this one's V core plus MEM. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a really awkward layout, like, well, I'm, I'm not a fan of how, how they decided to lay out their, their power rails. I don't, I'm, I don't necessarily have a problem with having, you know, one controller for VDDCC, uh, VDDCI and one controller for VMEM, um, and then basically not having a per core controller per rail. I don't think that's a problem. Like, the AMD reference card does that, but I don't think that's a, like, I don't consider that a necessity. But, uh, my concern with, like, my issue with this is is just, like, if they wanted to do that, they should have moved this core out, 
maybe move the th move the eight pins th like inboard, right? Like further in, or maybe all the way to the edge, right? Through the controllers. Basically, I would take this section of the card and just right? Just rotate the whole thing like that so that you get the VRM centered so that your VDDCI and VMEM are relative, like, aren't so far away from one of your freaking, you know, cores. So, yeah. Um, I, like, I'd assume that would improve your memory overclocking because this thing's got to have a lot of voltage drop across that distance, right? Like, if you're losing, I don't know, like, you could lose, like, 100 millivolts. 100 millivolts easily, you know, it could be costing you 20, 50 megahertz, maybe more. Uh, actually, definitely more than that. Like, yeah, that's, that's a significant amount of voltage drop to, to, you know, get just so that, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not a fan. I'm definitely not a fan of having the freaking power rail, like, the, having the voltage regulator so far away from what it's trying to power. Um... An interesting card. And I gotta say, I'm impressed that this is actually a six phase. I originally thought this was like four plus two um, plus question mark. <laughs> this whole area was just a question mark. So, yeah. Interesting card. Very interesting card. So, well, we'll see if I can get it working. That, that, that'd be... That, that'll be, you know... Like, if it starts working... I mean, I just cleaned it, so it might start working just from being clean. Because it did turn up rather dusty and disgusting, but uh, I'm not sure. The shroud also had a broken fan, so I chucked the whole shroud because eh, <laughs> I don't need the shroud. Um, worst case scenario, I get a free, a very interesting, like I consider this a pretty cool wall ornament. And uh, I get some free heat sinks. So, because the heat sinks for these, like what's cool about this card is the whole spacing here is actually reference 799, uh, 7970. The 7990 uses slightly different hole spacing. So, yeah, that, that's kind of awkward with 7990s, whereas it's just like the heat sinks off of a 7990 don't actually fit anything other than a 7990. Whereas the heat sinks off of these, they actually fit regular 7950s and 7970s. And my 7950 doesn't actually have a heat sink. And I think they even fit. Well, they, they don't fit 290Xs because the, the they have the raised center copper portion. But anyway, that, that is it for the video. And since this is a bonus video, I mean, there's a comment section. There's also the patrons discord you can use either. I'm not going to tell you to subscribe because you probably already are. Thanks for watching and goodbye.